Hey, we're Zephyr's Travels and welcome to Big Bend National Park. We're visiting there today and uh, we've never been, so this is exciting for us. Yeah, but I got my adventure hat on, so we're ready to go. Let's go along. Okay, let's go. While we have a few minutes this morning, we thought we'd catch you up on some of our travels through Texas. We've been shooting a lot of video, but we haven't had the opportunity really to talk. Part of it because it's really been windy in oh Texas. Oh my gosh, it's been extremely windy. Yeah, yeah both uh, Texas and New Mexico, which we'll get into later, um, have been very windy. So it's been hard to do dialogue for some of our video. Uh, we left Hondo and our next destination was down into the southwest corner of Texas to Big Bend National Park. And we went to um, Roadrunner Travelers uh, RV Park. Right. And there we boondock for four nights. Four, four nights. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a good location. It was not too far from the park, so it was a short drive. and. The first day that we went into the park, we uh, took the scenic drive, the... Uh, Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive. Right. And that takes you to the kind of the western end of the park. Um. Hey, we're Zephyr's Travels and welcome to Big Bend National Park. We're visiting there today and uh, We've never been, so this is exciting for us. It's a bit chilly, but it is sunny. And usually, unless the uh, wind picks up, it should not be too bad. Right, right. So, let's go along. Okay, let's go. Because of the sun? I guess, yeah. Yeah, turn out. What do you think? Oh. Very neat. That's a very scenic shot. Yeah. Well, this is the store slash visitor center. I don't think it's the largest visitor center. I think the center one is bigger than this one. But we're gonna go wander around and check out things. Behind me is the floodplain of the Rio Grande.
where they need one of those signs that kind of explain to you what this is. Yeah. This is the Rio Grande River right here, and this is the ex one of the access points to the river. Now it does look like you could put a kayak in right here if you wanted to. We have ours, but I don't think we're gonna go kayaking. It's still a little too chilly. Well, Diane just informed me that to use your kayak, you need to get a boating permit from the Visitor Center. South of me right here is Mexico. This is the border from the U.S. to Mexico, the Rio Grande River, and that is nature's wall. Well, I can tell you one thing, if we put the kayaks in here, we'd be heading down that river in I was going to say, you'd be going down past. Yeah. Quite the current. I guess this is one of those rivers that you put in one place and go out at a different. Yeah. And some transportation. Just a few more feet and this could be an international video. Do you have your passport? No. <laughs> well then don't cross the border. Isn't the river the border? Right. Stop at the visitor center. Got our national parks uh, passport book stamp for this park, so we've got another one checked off on the list. Someday we'll get them all. We really wanted to kind of spend our first day just kind of getting the lay of the land a little bit and right. seeing what we wanted to see. We also thought after we did our hike, and we'll tell you about that, uh, we decided we would drive down to the Rio Grande Village. And our thought was being a village. It was shops and restaurants and yeah, whatever. We like kind of pictured like a little western type town, maybe with some you know shops where you could buy some you know yeah. souvenirs or Native American or Mexican made items. It wasn't that. It well, no. <laughs> what it turned out to be is there are campgrounds within the park itself, yeah. and if you're staying in that particular campground, we're gonna. Can you cross the border from there? Yeah, that section that okay. section of the campground you can cross into Mexico. It really is just like a little store. Yeah, it there, was a campground store. Yeah, it was maybe a, we missed it. Maybe it was someplace else and we totally missed it, but that's, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. So, you know, unless you're camping at that park right there, I would. Yeah, know. it was just a <laughs> campground store. There wasn't any yeah. souvenirs yeah. or anything there. I would interest. just, you know. Go, the, go from, to Panther Junction right. um, Visitor Center. There are other visitor centers throughout the park, and and I'm not saying they're not worth visiting. Um, you know, there was one on the um, western end of the park on our, on our drive-through that we pulled into. Yes. Unfortunately, it was closed. It was lunchtime. 
but it, you know they do have some scenic uh, buildings and such that are you know yes. historic that have been there for a while. Right, right. So yeah, and and then on to the second day when we go in, went into the park, we decided to do a one hike. Yeah, so we went to Grapevine Hill Road, and the hike area was seven miles down this road. It was a it wasn't a dirt road; it was a gravel road, but it was rough. Yes, <laughs> and we when you say rough, we mean rough. Now there was cars driving back there. I really was surprised but you'd have to be very very careful and, and watch where you're driving because you could easily take out a, a tire and a rim on some of the rocks or at the bottom road. of your car yeah yeah <laughs> they just say high clearance vehicles right. for a reason and and uh, granted it's rough too because our truck is set up for towing mm -hmm. and so the suspension is stiff it's it's got airbags in it and it's it rides very stiff the tires had a lot of air pressure in them and I I probably could have adjusted all that and it would have been better well we didn't know yeah. what to expect on this road yeah. but it, it, there are parts where it gets very narrow and you have to pull over to the side to um, let other vehicles by and I know we scratched the side of the truck up well with some, with some not as bad as we thought. well it's gonna have to there it's maybe or a buff out <laughs> yeah yeah we but you know but but anyways the, the, yeah. the, the ride back there is a challenge keep that in mind if you're going but the hike is worth it yes yes we had seen it on a video of another YouTuber, so that's the hike we decided to do. Yeah. And the first part of the hike is pretty flat and just dirt. Yeah, it's know. got a slight gradual uphill, um, but it's, it's a flat trail, no climbing or anything. And that's about a mile. Right. And then about um, the a quarter, quarter mile, mile is all climbs. And it's, and it's, it's all uphill rocks. and all rocks. Yeah. And so you keep that in mind. We, I think we saw a lot of people heading back there that weren't prepared for that. No, you want to make sure you have good hiking boots or, you know, something substantial. I certainly wouldn't wear sandals no. or even low sneakers. Um, and if you have to carry your, ch your children because they're small, don't take that section of the hike because you're not going to be able to carry a child up that area. You need your hands. Right. At least we did. Yeah. And I mean, we had, and we actually had walking sticks, which helped. Uh -huh. You know, help giving you you know something to get a, a balance on when you were climbing some of those. Right. Right. Uh -huh. But we did reach the top. Yeah. And uh, we I we stood under the rock and it was pretty cool. Well, let's show you some video of that. Yeah. Daisies blooming, sundress swaying in the breeze. I can't stop staring. You've put a spell on me, and I hope that you never decide to set me free. Maybe we could bring our dogs. I know. The way you're moving. Got me moving my own feet The greatest feeling That I could ever dare to dream Is you forever moving next to me Let's not waste time or take this slow We've got miles behind us but miles to go So let's just break this down Simplest truth You and I as one Will always be better than two the Leaves ain't waiting Their colors changing like the times And I'm taking So how's the climb? Oh. Tiring Not in shape to do this. We'll get you in shape. Yeah. Well, if we do more hikes and such. I mean, we took a, you know, a little bit more of an extreme, at least for the climbing part of this one. Yeah. But we've done this this level before. You just need to get yourself back into used to moving more. 
We don't have this on the East Coast. I know. That's why we do it here. Let's not waste time or take this slow. We've got miles behind us, but miles to go. So let's just break this down to the simplest truth. You and I as one will always be better than two. Yeah, you and I as one will always. Better than two. Balance Rock. Yep. And Big Bat National Park. It was what? Two and a half mile hike to get up here? Uh huh. That's what it said, but I think it's more two and a half miles round trip. Because I only got 1.8 miles and I clicked this soon after we started. Oh, okay. As you can tell, I'm tired. Not so much Randy. Randy says it's because I have short legs. And that could be an issue. But uh, we made it down from to the top to see Balanced Rock. Yeah. And, uh, so the Balanced Rock is like way up there. So you have to climb up through, I don't know if you can see the people in the, doing the trail, but yeah. it's, it's a climb. You want to be prepared. Just take your time. And I would highly recommend walking sticks or hiking sticks. Yeah, hiking have. sticks and, you know, we wearing wearing our, our high top hiking shoes, which I think help too. Right. They, um, you know, help with uh, securing your ankles. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but yeah, for us, we had to take it slow for me, but it was all right. We reached the uh, our destination. And yeah. now we've gotten back down, so we're on the easier part of the day. Yeah, so now we just got about a little over a mile walk. Yeah. And it's not bad. So not bad. And it's going to be down, gradually downhill. So, so that I, I like that hike. I I liked a little bit of the challenge at the end of it. I know you were struggling a little bit because you have a knee that bothers you sometimes. Right. But you did okay. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think in, and you weren't too sore the next day. No. So no. I think you, you, know, you yeah. kind of pushed yourself a little bit, which was good. Yeah. But it was a fun hike. Long drive out again. Yeah, it takes you know quite a bit of time to get out and there's a lot of other things to do at Big Ben um, we only did the two days you get I think they say three to four days is what you really want a lot to go to Big Ben but we you know we wanted to see some of the other things in the area so we went to uh, Terralinga um, which is a ghost town it's an old mining town it's an old mining town yeah so the, the history of the town was that it, it actually mined um, quicksilver or what you would consider mercury yeah, and it was very valuable and useful during World War I for making bombs. Right. Um, but after the war, the need for that kind of dried up, and so the mine just ended up being shut down about the end of World War II. Right. And so the, the town literally just dried up and disappeared. But we went there, and it was it it's kind of coming back as a tourist destination. Right. And the first thing we went to check out was the cemetery which was really cool. Mm -hmm. It has a really nice cemetery, uh, you know, old cemetery, old graves, but it's current, the people are still being buried in it. Yes, yes. Um, and that was neat, it kind of gives you an idea of the history. The cemetery is still being used, but there's a lot of older graves here that are essentially unmarked at this point. They've got just stones and maybe a cross, or what's left of a cross laying on them. What 
better way to start your visit to a ghost town than stopping at the cemetery. These older cemeteries are extremely interesting and it's you know it's very interesting to walk around especially in a cemetery of a different culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then we went into town and, and there is a uh, trading post which is kind of a gift shop. Uh, they have quite a bit of different, it's not just all just little trinkets, they have a lot of different things there. Right. Um, There's also a hotel which yep. you can stay in. Yep, that used to be the um, uh, mine owner's home. And there's also the Starlight Restaurant, which we understand is pretty famous if you do go there. Yeah. It doesn't open until 5 p.m., so we were a little early. And I understand you do need reservations, and sometimes there's a long wait to get in. Yeah. But uh, it would be an interesting place. And there is also that other little, I think it's a little restaurant, too. Yeah, there was a barbecue place. Yeah. 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 And then we found a pizza place outside of town. That right. We um... This is Terralinga, Texas. It's actually the ghost town of Terralinga, Texas. And back in the turn of the century, the 1800s, this was a thriving mining town. They mined quicksilver here, and it was very high in demand during World War II because it was used to make bombs and such. And so the production of quicksilver in Europe was shut down, and this mining town supplied a lot of that for the war, war effort. Unfortunately, after the war, when the production of quicksilver picked back up again in other parts of the world, the need for quicksilver here started to die down. Now, there was hope that maybe after for World War II, the, the demand would go up again, and they kind of kept the town going for a while, but about the end of World War II, the quicksilver mine went bankrupt and the town kind of went down from there. But this has now come back as a tourist town and there is a Starlight uh, Theater here which is now a restaurant but that used to be the place you would go for entertainment, the, the miners would go for entertainment. Um, and there's a trading uh, post here where you can go in and pick souvenirs and such up. Kind of a neat little town. Now we started our, our tour of the town with the cemetery and ended it here at the uh, sign. While visiting Big Ben, the Zephyr Travels crew stays at Roadrunner Travelers RV Park. We're going to show you a little bit around the park this morning. Our campsite here at Roadrunner's Travelers was a boondocking site. It cost us $35 per night, which is probably reasonable for this area being just outside of the National Park. Um, the other sites are all, all full hookup, and I think they're about double that price, so I think they're in the $60 to $70 range. We were here on a holiday weekend, and we weren't able to get into any of those other sites for more than one day, so we just elected to stay with the boondocking site, which worked out fine for us. We used our solar panels and our batteries, and we had plenty of power for the four days we were here one point of advice if you do go to the area I I would bring whatever you need as far as food yeah. or anything there there's a I think one gas station maybe a couple maybe a couple restaurants yeah convenience store right. um, type of shopping and that's about all you're gonna have right. so I mean, we made a point of, of really stocking up made sure we had plenty of meals um, we were boondocking you know, we chose boondocking there are full hookups um, but there wasn't anything available. We were there on a holiday weekend, so we weren't able to get a full hookup site, so we boondocked, which was no problem. No, for us. and they do, I mean, it's a good boondocking area. Yeah, it's a nice campground. Um, bo for boondocking in the campground, it was $35 a night. I think it was $50 to $60 a night for a full hookup site. Roadrunners Travelers uh, RV Resort is a really nice campground. It's probably one of the better ones that we saw outside of the national park. Yes. Um, a lot of them are really kind of trailer parks, but this one, it looks like the owners put, put a lot of work into it. There's, it right. It they, looks like they're still working on it, yeah. too, so they may expand it to have some more hookups, yeah. hook, hookup sites. Yeah, uh, they're probably going to expand it some more, but they, the, the sites are all gravel um, because everything's, it's a desert, so there's no grass. Right. Um, so the sites are gravel. The whole place is pretty much gravel, but they do have some community areas. They have a dog park. Um, they have a community area with games and uh, fire pit and, they, and Sunday night they did have a community campfire with uh, music. 
Yes. And it was like right across from where we were staying, which was nice. Yeah. Um, so they, they do a lot. I think it's worth the $35 of Boondock there and $50, $60, or whatever it is, to get a full hookup site. I would definitely come back. I would recommend that probably over what I saw some of the other campgrounds. Right, right. Yeah. So that concludes our trip through Texas. From there, we leave and we head to New Mexico, and that will be our next video. So if you'd like this video, what should they do? Please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channels of our travels. Hit that bell for notifications. We post new videos on a weekly basis, and we'd love to have you follow along on our journeys, especially like this one. So until the next time, guys, we will see you down the road. See you down the road. Bye, Bye. guys. Let's not waste time. We'll take this slow.